Thank you. Thank you. Um, so you all are in for disappointment because I am neither that attractive nor that interesting. Um, that's the work of some very talented journalists in my newsroom and in the Baltimore Sun newsroom. Um, thank you. I'd like to thank the National Press Foundation for this award. Um, ben, Bad ben Bradley said, as long as a journalist tells the truth, in conscience and in fairness, it is not his job to worry about the consequences. Today, even after the events of June 28th, I believe this to be true. It's a difficult thing to stand here and accept an honor that no matter how much I appreciate it, I simply would rather not have. I'd much rather have my friends. But from the moment they died, I believe my staff and I have done what Bradley was saying we should do. Show up, look for the truth in good conscience, good conscience, and report it with fairness online and in print. Yet there have been consequences to what we do. And there are many people who deserve the same praise you're giving me who work just as hard to deal with those consequences. Tim Knight and Tribune Publishing have kept us going when a lesser company might just as easily have let us disappear. Imagine my surprise when Baltimore Sun Triff Latsis and senior editor Jay Judge, who only five years ago were my competitors, turned out to be the brothers I never knew I needed. I'm here because advertising director Marty Patton continues to convince businesses that a wounded community newspaper is worth supporting. Thank you. I need to thank Steve Gunn for seeing more in me than others did, and Tim Thomas for listening to him and giving me this job. More than anyone, I owe what I am to my wife, Shara, and our children, Evan and Lily, who continue to put up with my failure to separate the journalist from the husband and father. I could talk to you about the importance of community journalism. We report it's been very impressive standing here listening to people talk about reporting on, on, on national issues and international issues. We report on controversial bike lanes through historic districts. <laughs> we report on candidates running for office saying horrible things about Muslims. We report on violence in our communities. We report on opioid deaths. We report on sexual harassment at the Naval Academy. I could say that what happened in Annapolis, our refusal to surrender to violence that was an attempt to silence a free press, and the support our community continues to demonstrate are a symbol of hope for the future of the journalism. But I think you know that. Instead, let me tell you about Danielle Ohl. She's the only person I've ever offered a job to at the end of the interview. She covers the city hall and the Naval Academy more than enough for anyone. And she's, she's also reporting on the trial of the man who's been charged with killing our friends. She's covering that difficult story with Chase Cook, the county government and state house reporter who rushed back to her office that June afternoon and tweeted out, we're putting out a damn newspaper. Damn was in there. In words and actions, he continues to make that possible. Let me tell you about Celine San Felice. Weeks after surviving the attack, she wrote about traveling to Parkland with victims of a Maryland school shooting. And then she wrote about taking a journey to Turkey where she spread the ashes of one of our dead friends. She's emerged from this tragedy as a talented writer and journalist. Let me tell you about Rachel Pacella. She fought to survive that day. She continues to fight every day, finding a way forward in the everyday work of community journalism. They're out here today. If they could stand up, they deserve this as much as I do.
There were a limited number of seats at the table, so let me tell you about Phil and Josh and Paul and Jimmy and Jeff and Lauren and Dave and Bill and Thalia and Bob and Catherine and Pat, Mark, Aaron, Brian, Greg and others. I could tell you about Karen and Lon and Raggy and Laura. I could tell you about Jan Janelle and Kim and Christine and Elena. I could tell you about how the University of Maryland has had our back from the beginning. But in the time I have tonight, I need to tell you about the colleagues and friends we lost on June 28th. I have to tell you that Rob Hyacin could have done this better than I am. Gerald Fishman would have been more eloquent. Wendy Winters would have hurt our community better than I have. John McNamara would have provided the quiet and strength we need. And Rebecca Smith was simply the nicest of us all. It changes your life, the pursuit of journalism. Ed Bradley said that too. So I'd add this. Your life is changed by those who join you in that pursuit, even those you lose along the way. Thank you again.